Hello, my name's Fran and you're watching a retouching tutorial for tipsquirrel.com. Today I'm going to be turning this into this and then this. So in today's episode, I'm going to be helping you fix those blown out skies. Now, as you can see this image here, you might actually throw this away. You might delete it. You might not even bother retouching it because the sky is completely blown out. There's no detail there at all. Um, but please don't because those images can create really great high contrast black and white imagery. So if you do see a white sky or white background, that can actually look really awesome. So whatever you do, don't delete them, do retouch them, use Lightroom, use Camera Raw, and you can create a really awesome black and white high contrast image. If you're creating this for a client or for portfolio or something like that, and you do actually really want a sky in there, I'm actually going to be teaching you at the end of this episode how you can add a sky in there, really blend it in nicely and make it really work and look natural as if you did shoot it on the day like it did have clouds in the sky. Um, we're going to keep it all natural. I'm going to teach you all of that in this episode, so keep watching. So when you first open your image in Camera Raw, obviously you get all your sliders and I'm going to be using quite a lot of tools here to create that high contrast black and white image. So I'm going to bring my exposure down just a touch. I'm going to really ramp up the contrast because I want a lot of that in there. Bring down the highlights just a bit. I'm going to open up the shadows because I want it to be more or less a HDR style image. Just going to move the whites down a little bit but not too much because there was actually a little bit of clouds in the sky then so i don't want those to show through i'm going to bump up the blacks and bring up that clarity because it is like i said a high contrast image and i want it to be really really powerful against that white background i'm going to increase the vibrancy a little bit because there are some nice warm tones in there but as you can see there's like some magentas there's some blues some cyans in some of the framework which I don't want. So we're gonna head to the hue and saturation sliders and I'm gonna take away all of those colors. So if we just hit that, um, I'm gonna keep in the warm tone. So I'm gonna add a bit more red, a bit more orange, a bit more yellow, but the green, cyans, blues, purples, magentas, they're all gonna go right down. I'm gonna desaturate all of those because it, it looks a bit messy. So next I'm just gonna add a little bit of noise reduction because it was quite noisy and then on the lens correction sliders we're going to tick that and then let's see I'm going to tick that and choose my lens as well hopefully it will remove the distortion I'm going to add a bit more vignetting because it has taken some of the, the blacks away from the, the, the bottom corners there so adding a bit of vignetting will work a treat I'm going to dehaze the image as well. I know that it's quite hazy, a bit milky, so I'm going to slide that there, improve that a bit. Um, let's see, improve the shadows a little bit by opening more of that out. It's looking good. Just add a bit more. You can see some of the clouds have kind of appeared from the background, but it's okay because I'm going to remove those quickly in Photoshop after. That's pretty much done for the sliders. It is a bit wonky, so if we use this tool here, we can literally just roll that across and it will straighten our image. It's a great tool for straightening horizons, so I would recommend that. Click OK and probably going to crop this at this point as well. So that's pretty much done there. I'm probably going to do a couple more tweaks. Put a bit more dehaze in. So adjust the highlights just a bit because I don't want to see the clouds, but it's probably inevitable that I can see them. 
Right, so open that in Photoshop. I'm just going to get the brightness tool here. I'm going to whack that all the way down. And as you can see, there is some clouds still in the image. So I'm just going to duplicate my background. Head to the Dodge tool. Select Highlights. And then I'm just going to sort of paint those out using the Dodge tool. So the entire background is white now, which I'm really liking. I'm going to add some more contrast in here as well reduce the brightness just a bit. I'm quite liking that. I think I'm going to use high pass at this point just to add some texture and sharpness. So duplicate the background, head to other, click on high pass, click OK and change the blending mode to soft light. So that just adds some nice um, textures, some sh a lot of sharp sharpening. Um, I'm really liking that so I think that's it for the high contrast image so as you can see it's just a lot of steps in camera raw a lot of contrast a lot of clarity use that high pass filter and yes that's that's essentially how you can get this high contrast black and white image and I think it works really well against that white background as well um, it's, it's looking really good but if you do want to add a skyline add the clouds um, I think for this type of image, you know, I was looking up at the Eiffel Tower, you would only see clouds. So if I drop in my clouds image, now you can just use one that you've already, you know, shot. You can use a stock image. It's really up to you. So I'm just going to add that into my image. I'm just going to rasterize a layer because I don't really need to have a rasterized layer at this point. I'm going to obviously change this layer to black and white. And I'm going to select the white background using the magic wand tool. So that the clouds themselves can be on their own layer with that mask on. So I'm just going to add my mask and it brings the Eiffel Tower obviously to the foreground. Now we double click on the layer and I'm going to reduce the density of the image. And I'm probably going to feather the outside by one pixel. It just blurs the edge so you haven't got a really harsh line between the Eiffel Tower and the clouds which you wouldn't in real life. And let's see here. I'm going to change the blending mode to multiply probably change the fill to about 50% because it's obviously not going to be that dark. And then if you double click on the layer, you'll get a layer styles window. And where it says blending at the bottom, press Alt and click the slider and it will actually apart the sliders so they'll break into two. So you can use those and really adjust the layer from the white background and using your layer so it'll sort of blend things a lot nicer than if it would just use opacity or fill. As you can see it's sort of separating the different colours which is really awesome. So you can have a play around with that and see what works for you. Um, it just obviously separating the blacks, the whites, the greys etc. So now the background is looking really flat, so I'm going to add some brightness and contrast because on the day, you know, it was a very bright sky. The Eiffel Tower is very high contrasty, so you do need to change your levels and curves and brightness of that clouds layer as well. So that's looking pretty good. I'm going to use some curves as well. So again, image adjustments and curves. Just going to put a little S curve on here. And then I'm going to click OK. So that's looking pretty nice. Obviously you can change the fill, the opacity to really blend it in a lot more and get it to your liking because obviously everyone's tastes are different.
Now, as you can see on the image, um, it's of obviously the Eiffel Tower, and there's a lot of segments within the framework that is obviously see-through, that you can obviously see the background behind. I think for this particular image, those elements would have like white clouds behind, so it doesn't matter too much. Um, if it was your image, perhaps you'd want to cut around each and every single section. Um, but for me, I think I'm just going to leave it as it is. And I'm really liking that. I think it looks natural. Um, obviously, you can, like I said before, change the opacity if you want to brighten it, if you want to use a higher level curves, S curves, or, you know, bring in the levels or whatever. But I'm really liking that and I think it works. And yeah, it looks natural. It's great. Okay, so that's the end of the video. Thank you very much for watching. Like I said at the very beginning, please don't delete those images that you think aren't usable because like we've seen here, this sky was completely blown out, no detail whatsoever. And we've created this high contrast image. We've added a sky in. So if you think an image is unusable, think again because there's always a technique and there's always something that you can do to that image. So thank you very much for watching, guys. I hope you have enjoyed this video. If you have, don't forget to give it a like. If you want to see more from me, don't forget you can subscribe to the channel. It's absolutely free and you'll be notified about my latest content. Be sure to check out tipsquirrel.com for the latest Photoshop and Lightroom tutorials. You can follow me on Twitter at Photoshop Pro and on Instagram at Photoshop Fran. Thanks again and I'll see you in a future video.